Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin coming to you from Daytona State College, and this is CEN3722, Human Computer Interaction. And today we're going to talk about a fun topic displays. This will be kind of fast. I'm going to move through some of the basic principles of display design. So what we want to do is we want to understand the concepts associated with how we design and put together displays, how we make this stuff visible to the user. And we're looking about really at visual presentation. There are some principles that you need to understand about how you design displays. And we're going to look at these basic principles and give some simple examples of each of them. These are all relatively easy and straightforward, and a lot of them will seem to be quite common sense, but they're kind of, and they're also kind of interesting. So first, let's look at what is a display? Well, that's pretty easy. It's anything a user is going to see. In the field of user interface design, we might be just showing them on a computer screen, or they might be a display that you show in a panel, but essentially, there are going to be things that users see. We're also going to add in an auditory component and talk a little bit about the guidelines of how the auditory component should be used. When you create a display, well, what are you going to have to decide? We've got a lot of decisions we have to make. You're going to first decide what is it that you're going to display and then how are you going to display it? Where is it going to be? What's the color it's going to have? How big is it going to be? Is it going to move? Is it going to be bigger than the other things around it? Is it going to, relative to the other, other things that are in there? Is it coded? Is it direct? Is it going to, all sorts of decisions you have to make when you decide how to put together a display. So we'll just look at some of the examples that we've got here. So for example, this could be a design of a display. Now, in this case, it's not necessarily a very good design because I really don't know what goes with what. So the, set, the principles that we're going to look at would say, let's figure out a way to do this a little bit better. What is a better way? Well, this would be a better way, something where I've got now, to me, it looks like the color is an indicator of status, the number is an indicator of value, and then I've got a knob that lets me do settings. Those are, that, that actually takes a whole bunch of the principles of display design and puts them together. Like, the, you know, where, where are things located and how do, they, how do they work relatively to each other? How are they grouped? So, display principles, the basic display principles on the human side that you've got to think about are the perception, the mental model, the attention, and the memory. What can people be able to do? So first, let's look at perception. Perception means they've got to be able to perceive what is meant by the display, especially if there's an associated action. This is a great example. So you tell the user to take an action when the color of the blue gets to royal blue. Really? That's a limit that most people are going to have a really difficult time with. But we deal all the time with displays that have graduated colors. There needs to be more information. So don't require this type of perception to be used to take a specific action. What else? Well, the ability for users to process. People typically process from the top down. Okay, understanding that they process from the top down. Some people don't process from the top down. They process from the left to the right. And in other cultures, they may process from the right to the left. But people process in a specific direction. And also part of that processing is ensuring that as you do this type of processing, that things that you need to be indicated are actually demonstrated or shown in something that will draw attention to it. This is a really good example. You know, as you're working your way down, valve 15 is off. On the left-hand side, you may not catch it. On the right-hand side, you hopefully would. Okay? We've got lots of different ways of getting information to users through displays. And redundancy is one of the big ones. Redundancy gain says you can do it with one, you can do it with two, or you can do it with three indicators, like color only, color plus label, Color plus label plus sound. 
that redundancy gain will do a much better job of getting it into the, into the users themselves. Also, perception has to deal with expectation of what do you, how do you expect things to be laid out? Okay, just, uh, you're, you're used to a specific mental model, like in this case of a street light, having a display that follows the street light, which is something that users are used to, is probably going to be more effective than having just lights at random locations on the screen that have specific meanings, okay? And showing the three different colors that are there and giving the, making the one actually show up when the other ones don't. Also, discriminability. Discriminability means, am I going to be able to see it? And a good example was one of the ones where we had VAL 15, which was on or off. But you have signals. The signals are similar. The signals are very likely to be confused. And similarity has a huge effect on this. So, for example, in the example of the J606 versus the J706, you may not see the difference because you've got many things that you need to process with only one being dissimilar. Whereas in the lower example, 606 versus 706, you're much more likely to pick up the, discrimin the, the discrimination between the change from the 6 to the 7 because you don't have as much stuff going on that's there. Looking at things that don't have very well indicated what it is, okay, especially if there's a similarity, you're going to miss this. However, it's relatively straightforward to put that information onto the display. So if you've got specific graphs and charts or things that you need to do, labels that have the portion that is different shown in a way that brings it to the user's attention, that is one way to do it. In the concept of mental models, making sure that things actually have a level of pictorial realism so instead of just a display that shows a number for a thermometer, an actual thermometer would work better, but a thermometer that actually has a color coding that goes from, that shows the cold versus the hot might even be better. Dealing with the concept of movement, when things are moving, if a display goes, you know, twists or turns or goes left to right, Certain people will have a perception that high is on top, low is on bottom numbers, and some people will see it the other way around. Or they might see left to right as low on the left, high on the right. If you've got to develop a moving model, make the moving model go with the user's mental model of how they expect that thing to move. Okay, so the mental model and the moving model should match. Ecological interface design. Okay, we want to make sure that the real world system matches the mental model and the display system. So, for example, a system where you're trying to deal with two valve, a valve and two tanks, putting in a simple basic set of information may not be as good as having an actual pictorial representation where it's very easy to see what is going on. I've got tank one, which is decreasing. Okay, my res reservoir, which is decreasing. I have a valve open and water flowing from at a specific rate to the other valve, to the other tank, which is by the way, increasing right now. That gives a tremendous amount of information in a very compact form that users would have a very high capability of understanding. Attention principles. One of the primary attention principles is the concept of minimizing information access cost. What do we mean? Well, we want there to be very little effort associated with doing things that you do on a common basis in any type of interface. And one of the great examples of this was the very early, and I don't know if you've ever, seen, some people may never have seen this, but the very early iPod examples where essentially you had very quick access with a twist wheel and a button to get to what, what it is that you wanted most. And it was real, it's really easy, but it hit this principle very quickly. 
If you wanted to get to a specific song, you simply twisted your finger around the, the dial. In reality, it actually was a tremendous amount of work, but you didn't mind it because you were actually getting to see the screen go as you were moving through this. It brought the access to what you wanted to see the most right up into your face. Proximity compatibility. Okay, you want to make sure that things that are similar in the world that you're controlling are placed similarly in your display. Close mental model. If the mental model puts them close proximity and the reality puts it in close proximity, the mental model will typically follow. They need to be in close display proximity. Attention. You have, and we've dealt with tension before. You have the focused attention right on top of it. The divided attention, definitely not on top of it. Or selective attention as I'm looking at this, now I'm looking at that, okay? You want to follow the model that goes with making sure that if you're dealing with a specific type of attention model, that your system is capable of dealing with that type of attention model. Proximity, we looked at that one before. Okay, that was, again, we, the same thing we just had showed before, but, uh, and this is our example from before, you put the pieces that go together in close proximity. Now, multiple information resources. When you've got to process a tremendous amount of information, it may be good to break that information up from just a visual or just an audio into both a visual and audio. We actually have the ability to process more information using both visual and audio processing capability together than we do with any one of those by themselves. So for example, if I were just to hit the slides and stay mute, it would be better for me to talk and actually slow this, show the slides at the same time. You get the ability to get more information and process more information. You must be able to also deal with the limitations of user memory. One of the great ways of doing this is the concept of called predictive aiding. In many situations, when you're designing a, an interface, you'll actually know what's going to occur if the user takes specific actions or what actually is going to happen based on current conditions. And you can build that into the interface design itself. So the principle of knowledge in the real world is essentially saying that you need to be able to see the visibility of what actually is occurring in the real world associated with what the display has, that they need to have a match to them. They also need to have a level of consistency. Okay, Consistency saying do not design a system where you've got some situations where the buttons are in one order and some situations where the buttons are in another order. Or if you are using a specific design of a red, green, and yellow for meaning specific things and they're designed a specific way, stay with that level of consistency throughout the system. Okay? Don't have the user have to develop a different mental model for them. In developing alerts, because you're going to put alerts in there, okay? Alerts have essentially three ranges, and those three ranges should have the alerts and the audio signal associated with the alert that go with them. So the warning, bright red X, a buzzer, okay? A caution, a yellow, okay, which we know is a, which most people recognize as a caution, with a softer, a ding, or some sort of sound that says, hey, by the way, we need, we need to take care of this pretty soon. And just essentially alerting displays that have no real, um, just an advisory that are not critical issues, no auditory, okay, and don't throw in a big red on something that's essentially an advisory. You need to reserve those situations for things that are more critical. Labels need to be very unambiguous. I mean, you need to know, they need to match up with the real world, but they also need to be something that the user actually knows exactly what they mean, what do they do, okay? That's, that's gonna be very important. When you're designing the labels, you also have to take into consideration that you may have a dim screen, you may have low light, you wanna have high levels of contrast so the user has an easy time of being able to see what it is that they're doing and be able to literally be able to read it. You also need to make sure that you can discriminate between the different options that the user has to choose from. That it's not 
unambiguous that it's very obvious. Okay, so the labels themselves should be hopefully, hopefully, know, the user knows exactly what they're dealing with, that they're able to discriminate. And the big thing in being able to discriminate and the one that users get confused with all the time is the negative versus the positive label. Okay, make sure that they understand that, the, that which ones have a specific action, but positive versus negative, done versus continue. Okay, those have different specific meanings. Don't make them so that the user has no idea of what exactly that button or that label really pertains to. That there's a high level of meaningfulness in every option and every selection and every button. Remember, you are designing displays. You've gone through all sorts of different ways of dealing with the users between user testing and, uh, and all the different methodologies you have for the usability. You need to use these in your display designs and follow the basic principles of what needs to go into the display designs. So hopefully you've got, and this has all been a little bit of review, just putting it all together in the concept of designing displays, but understanding perception, user mental models, the concept of user attention, and how their memory is going to work within the system that you've got, different types of ways of providing alerts and alarms, but really knowing the display pr principles and ensuring that as you're designing displays and you're putting this all together, that you've looked through all of the different principles that you need to follow and ensure that you followed and tested them throughout the usability and the user testing necessary to provide a good display. You've also seen from human factors what some of the consequences are of not doing these things and having things that are not, that, that, that are ambiguous and confusing to the users and avoiding those types of situations. At this point, we're getting, or you should be getting very good at, at understanding the whole concept of the system design and putting it all together. So, Hopefully uh, you're now ready to design some incredibly good displays, putting this all together and designing these great HCI systems. Thank you very much. Dr. Ron England, signing out from Daytona State College.